Hi there. Thank you for joining me today. I am Skills from skillsondemand.online. In this tutorial, I'll be taking you through how to build a dynamic and interactive Excel dashboard that you're seeing now. In this example, we will learn how to create a dynamic Excel HR dashboard using the details from a demo IT company. We will be analyzing details such as employees by department, department expense, designation, employee type, employee status, total expense, number of males and females in the company, average sick leave and average employee rating. All data connected with each other to give you an impressive and dynamic Excel dashboard in few simple steps. Before we start, let's download the workbook file attached under this section. This is the data we will be using for this dashboard. There are over 400 rows of employee data. Our data is in tabular format with date range from December 2017 to January 2014. The data is classified by full name, gender, hire date, status, hire type, department, category, qualification, salary, bonus, overtime, sick leave rating, metrics like performance, behavior, innovation, colleague feedback, average rating and promotion eligible employee details by department. All data is formatted in an Excel table. A structured data is the first step in building a dashboard. When the table data is refreshed, all the changes that affect the formulas, pivot tables, pivot charts are updated automatically. To build an efficient and dynamic dashboard, we will use Excel functions such as formulas, pivot tables, spark lines, slices, and pivot charts. We have created this course using Excel 2016. However, you can use any Excel version such as Excel 2010, 2013, or 2016. So what are you waiting for? Let's get started. I believe you have the example workbook open and ready. Our workbook has sheets such as README, Data, Pivot and Charts and Dashboard. Let's format the data to an Excel table. Use the keyboard shortcut key Ctrl plus A which select all the data. Then Ctrl plus T which will create the table. Excel will give you a prompt with details of the data range. If your data has header, click on My table has a header and press OK. Now the table is ready. Let's give our table a name as data. Now let's create our first pivot table that shows number of employees by gender or number of male ways, number of females in a company. Select the data. Click on Insert tab. Click on Pivot table. Select the range where you want your pivot table to appear. Press OK. Our pivot field list is activated. Let's drag and drop gender to row field. Again, for the values, drag and drop gender to value field. Our pivot table is ready. Now, let's copy paste the pivot table as values. Format the table. We will use this data for our dynamic labels. Now, replicate the value using formula equal to cell value. Next, to avoid errors, let's add the formula if error and a value to display in case of an error.
Let's add one more pivot table to show the number of employees each year. So copy paste the previous pivot table. Clear the existing selection. Next, drag and drop years to row field. Hire date to value field. We will use this pivot table for our slicers later on. Now, let's create our pivot chart. For this pivot table, we will be using donut chart to display the data. Select the data. Click on insert tab. Click on pivot chart. Under all chart, select donut chart. Remove the field buttons, legends and titles. Let's add colors to the section. For male, let's select green and for female, let's select blue. Next, let's add data labels and add shapes to the data labels. Make the text as bold and format the data labels to change the values to percentage. Now, let's add two icons to our charts. Click on Insert tab. Click on Icons. Select the icon Male and Female and press OK. Change the color of the icon to match the chart. Now, let's move this chart to the dashboard sheet. Resize and adjust the chart. Place the icons inside the donut chart. Next, click on the chart and select No Fill option to remove background color. Now, let's add dynamic shape labels. So click on the insert tab. Click on shapes. Select a rectangle. Replicate the rectangle three times. For the first rectangle, let's add the text as female.
For the second rectangle, let's add the text as mail. For the third rectangle, let's add the text as total employees. For all three, select the shape color as no fill. Remove shape outline. Change text color as black. Adjust the font size and make it bold. Let's add three more shapes. Click on shapes. Select a rectangle. Replicate the rectangle three times. For the first shape, insert the formula as equal to cell value that has the female pivot table count. For the second shape, insert the formula as equal to cell value that has the male pivot table count. For the third shape, insert the formula as equal to cell value that has total employees pivot table count. For all three, select the shape color as no fill. Remove shape outline. Change text color as black. Adjust the font size and make it bold. Now, to make the chart stand out, let's add one more shape. Click on Insert tab. Click on Shapes. Select a rectangle shape. Adjust the size to match our chart area. Add an effect to the shape. Now, right click and send the shape backwards. Change the background color of the chart to no fill. Simple as that. Now, let's create our second pivot table that shows employees by department. Let's copy paste the previous pivot table. Clear the existing selection. Drag and drop department to row field. Gender to value field. Change the pivot table design to outline. Our pivot table is ready. 
we will use a tree map chart to replicate these values. We cannot directly use a tree map chart with a pivot table as we get an error message like this. We need to replicate the pivot table data into a table, create a tree map chart and then map the chart with the pivot table values. Simple as that. So let's copy paste the pivot table as values. Format the table with the same design. Next, for the department, add the formula as equal to department cell value. Replicate to the below rows. For count of gender, let's do a VLOOKUP with the department name and pivot table. Replicate to the below rows. Now, let's create our chart. Select the data. Click on Insert tab. Under All Chart, select Remap Chart. Press OK. Remove the legend. Add a title as Employees by Department. Next, let's format data label. Click on category name and values. Now, let's move the chart to the dashboard sheet. To make the chart stand out, let's add one more shape. Click on Insert tab. Click on Shape. Select a rectangle. Adjust the size to match the chart. Add an effect to the shape. Now, right click and send the shape backwards. Change the background color of the chart to no fill. Simple, isn't it? Now, let's create our third pivot table that shows hire types. Is the employees hired as an FTC or FTE? Which means, are the employees hired on a contract basis or a permanent basis? So let's copy paste the previous pivot table. Clear the existing selection. Drag and drop higher type to row field and higher type to value field.
change the report layout to outline form. Next, let's create our pivot chart. For this pivot table, let's use a bar chart. Select the data. Click on Insert tab. From All Chart, select Bar Chart. Remove Plot Area. Legends, Access Values and Field Buttons. Let's add a title as Employee Type. Add a data label and add shapes to the data label. Customize the bar color based on your preference. Now, let's move the chart to the dashboard sheet. To make the chart stand out, let's add one more shape. Click on Insert tab. Select Rectangle Shape. Adjust the size to match our chart area. Add an effect to the shape. Change the background color. Now, right click and send the shape backwards. Change the background color of the chart to no fill. It's so simple. Now, let's create our fourth pivot table that shows employee status. This pivot table will show details of active employees, employees on medical leave and employees on notice period. Let's copy paste the previous pivot table. Clear the existing selection. Drag and drop status to row field. 
status to value field. Next, let's create our pivot chart. For this pivot table, let's use a bar chart. Select the data. Click on Insert tab. From All chart. Select Bar chart. Remove plot area, legends, access value and field buttons. Let's add a title as Employee Status. Add a data label and add shapes to the data label. Customize the bar color based on your preference. Now, let's move the chart to the dashboard sheet. To make the chart stand out, let's add one more shape. Click on Insert tab. Under Shapes, select Rectangle Shape. Adjust the size to match our chart area. Add an effect to the shape. Change the background color. Now, right click and send the shape backwards. Change the background color of the chart to no fill. Simple, isn't it? Now, let's create our fifth pivot table that shows employee designation. This pivot table will show different designation in the company. Let's say team member, lower management, middle management, top management. So let's copy paste the previous pivot table. Clear the existing selection. Drag and drop category to row field. Category again to value field. In the value field, the value should reflect as count. Now our pivot table is ready. Let's create our pivot chart. For this pivot table, let's use a bar chart. Select the data. Click on Insert tab. From all charts, select bar chart. Remove plot area, legends, access value and field buttons.
Let's add a title as Employee Designation. Customize the bar club based on your preference. Add a data label and add shapes to the data label. Now, let's move the chart to the dashboard sheet. Next, to make the chart stand out, let's add one more shape. Click on Insert tab. Click on Shape. Select a rectangle. Adjust the size to match our chart area. Add an effect to the shape. Change the shape color. Now, send the shape backwards. Change the background color of the chart to No Fill. Now, our chart is ready. Simple, isn't it? Now, let's create our sixth pivot table that shows employee expense. This pivot table will show what is the amount of money spent on employee salary, employee bonus and employee overtime. Let's copy paste the previous pivot table. Clear the existing selection. Drag and drop. Salary, Bonus and Overtime to Value field. We are not using other pivot fields. This pivot table will give you an overall picture of total expense for workforce. Change the report layout to outline form. Next, let's create a pivot chart. For this pivot table, let's use a bar chart. Select the data. Click on Insert tab. From All Chart, select Bar Chart. Remove Plot Area, Legends, Access Value and Field Buttons. Let's add a title as Employee Expense. Add a data label and add shapes to the data label.
customize the bar color based on your preference. Now, let's move the chart to dashboard shade. To make the chart stand out, let's add one more shape. Click on Insert tab. Select the rectangle shape. Adjust the size to match our chart area. Add an effect to the shape. Now, right click and send the shape backwards. Change the background color of the chart to No Fill. Simple, isn't it? Next, let's create our 7th pivot table that shows expense by departments. Like previous, this pivot table will show what is the amount of money spent on employee salary, employee bonus and employee overtime by departments. Let's copy paste the previous pivot table. Drag and drop department to row field. Next, we want only the total value for each department. So copy paste the department name as values. In the next column, add a header as total expense. Now, insert a formula as equal to sum of salary, bonus and overtime. Now, we have the total expense. Drag and drop the formula to replicate to other rows. Next, let's create our pivot chart. For this pivot table, let's use a bar chart. Select the data. Click on Insert tab. Under All Chart, select Bar Chart.
remove plot area, legends, access value and field buttons. Let's add a title as expense by departments. Add a data label and add shapes to the data label. Customize the bar color based on your preference. Now, let's move the chart to the dashboard sheet. Next, to make the chart stand out, let's add one more shape. Click on Insert tab. Click on Shape. Select rectangle, adjust the size to match our chart area. Add an effect to the shape. Now right click and send the shape backwards. Change the background color of the chart to no fill. Our pivot chart is ready. Simple, isn't it? Now, let's create our 8th pivot table that shows average sick leave. Let's copy paste the previous pivot table. Our pivot field list is activated. Clear the existing selection. Drag and drop department to row field. Sick leave to value field. Ensure Value in the value field is reflecting a sum. Let's format our pivot table. We will be using a speedometer chart or a modified combo chart for this pivot table. Let's add a couple of fields below. Total names. Average sick leaves. Maximum sick leaves. Prorated rating. Multiplied by 100. Now, for total names, let's add a formula as equal to value of total names, which we will get from our first pivot table. Average sick leave value is the sum of all sick leaves divided by total names. Maximum sick leave is, let's say, your company allows a maximum sick leave of 10. 
prorated rating value is average sick leave divided by maximum sick leave. Last column is for multiplying the value with 100 to normalize it. Now let's format the table. Now for speedometer, let's make a table and add headers like speedometer, average sick leaves, start, initial, middle, end, max total For average sick leave, let's add a formula to multiply prorated rating into 100. In this chart, we are going to subdivide the values into 4 buckets. Total value of the chart will be 200. Let's keep the start value as 0, initial as 15, middle as 35, end as 50 and max value as 100 so that total becomes 200. Now for the pointer, let's add a header like pointer value sick leave. Let's add headers like value, pointer size, end, For value, let's add a formula as equal to average sick leave. For pointer size, let's add the value as 2. For end, let's add a formula as equal to total minus sum of value and pointer size. Now let's format the table. Now let's create our chart. We'll be using two charts here. One is a pie chart and second is a donut chart. For the donut chart, select the value from start to max. Click on the insert tab. Under all chart, select donut chart. Delete the chart title and legends. Change the shape outline to no outline. Now that our donut chart is ready, let's format it. Click inside the chart. Right click, format data series. Under series option, select the angle of the first slice as 270 degrees. 
Let's change the chart bar color as green, blue and red. For the below part, let's make the color as no fill. Now, let's make the chart background color as no fill. Chart outline as no outline. Now for the pointer, click on the chart, right click, select the data. Add a series name. Series value, which is our point value. Press OK. Now, we have our second chart ready. Now, let's change the second chart type to pie chart. So right click, change chart type. Under all chart, Select pie chart. Now, let's change the chart angle to 270 degrees as before. Change the shape outline to no outline. Now, let's make the section background color as no fill except for the pointer. Let's add a data labels to our pointer. Click only on the pointer. Right click and add data labels. Change the font size to 12. Let's add custom values to our data label. Click only on the data label. In the formula bar, reference the data label value with the values. Our chart is ready. Let's move the chart to the dashboard sheet. Let's add a title to our chart. Click on the chart. Now, Design tab gets activated. Under Design tab, click on Add Chart Element. Add Chart Title. Select Above. Add a title as Average Sick Leaves. Let's add a shape to show dynamic labels. So click on insert tab. Under shape, select a rectangle. Adjust the rectangle to match the chart area. Now, click on the shape. In the formula bar, add a formula as equal to average sick leave. Select the shape outline as no fill and shape background as no fill. Now let's add three more shapes to reference the chart color.
For the first shape, let's add the color as green. For the second shape, let's add the color as blue. For the third shape, let's add the color as red. Let's add three more shapes. So click on Insert tab. Click on Shape. Add a rectangle. Adjust the rectangle to match the chart area. For the first shape, Let's add the text as good. For the second, let's add the text as OK. For the third, let's insert the text as bad. Select the shape outline as no outline. Select the shape background as no fill. Change the text color to black and make it bold. Now to make the chart stand out, let's add one more shape. Click on insert tab. From shapes, select a rectangle. Resize and adjust the chart to match the chart area. Add an effect to the shape. Change the shape background color. Right click and send the shape backwards. Now our speedometer chart that shows average sickly value is ready. Simple isn't it? Now let's create our ninth pivot table that shows average employee rating. Let's copy paste the previous pivot table. Our pivot field list is activated. Clear the existing selection. Next, drag and drop department to row field. Average rating to value field. Ensure value in the value field is reflecting a sum. Like before, we will be using a speedometer chart or a modified combo chart for this pivot table. Let's copy paste the fields that we used earlier. Let's change couple of fields. Change average sick leave to average employee rating. Max sick leave to max employee rating. Average employee rating value is the sum of all employee rating divided by total names. Max employee rating value is 5 star. Prorated rating value is average rating divided by maximum rating. Last column is for multiplying the value with 100 to normalize it. 
Now for speedometer, for average rating, let's add a formula to multiply prorated value into 100. Since we copy pasted the previous table, all the formulas are reflecting as it is. Now let's create our chart. We'll be using two charts here. One is a pie chart and second is a donut chart. For the donut chart, select the value from start to max. Click on insert tab. Under all chart, select donut chart. Delete the chart title and legends. Change the chart outline to no outline. Now that our donut chart is ready, let's format it. Click inside the chart, right click format data series. Under series option, select the angle of the first slice to 270 degrees. Let's change the chart bar color as red, blue and green. For the below part, let's make the color as no fill. Let's make the chart outline as no fill. Chart background as no fill. Now for the pointer, right click, select the data. Add a series name. Add a series value. Now our combo chart is ready. Now let's change the chart type to pie chart. So right click, change the chart type to pie chart. Like before. Now, let's change the chart angle to 270 degrees. Now, let's make the section background color as no fill except for the pointer. Let's add data label to our pointer. So click only on the pointer. Right click add data labels. Let's add custom data label to our pointer. So click only on the data label. In the formula bar, insert the formula as equal to average employee rating. Change the font size to 12 and font color to black. Increase the font size. Let's add a title as Average Employee Rating. So click on the chart. Click on Design tab. Click on Add Chart Element. Add Chart Title and select Above Chart. Insert the title as Average Employee Rating. Simple, isn't it? Now let's move the chart to the dashboard sheet.
Now, let's add a shape to show dynamic labels. Copy paste the previous shape. In the formula bar, add a formula as equal to average employee rating. Our speedometer chart that shows average employee rating is ready. It's so simple. Now, let's learn how to make our dashboard interactive and dynamic in nature. Or, let's learn how to make the charts come alive using slicers. Slicers are customized visual filters that help you filter tables, pivot tables, pivot charts and cube functions in a click. Slicers are available in Excel 2013 and above. To add a slicer, click on any pivot table or chart. Click on Insert tab. Click on Slicers. Here you will see all your headers listed with a checkbox. Select the header you prefer to select as a base item to filter your data. In this example, let's select status, gender, promotion eligible, qualification, years, hire type, press OK. Now we have 6 slicers ready. You can add design and style elements like change of color to your slicer. In some cases, we see items with no data. In such cases, to remove it, click on the slicer. Click on the options. Select slicer settings. Here, click on the checkbox. Hide items with no data and press OK. Now, it's time to connect the slicers with the charts. Click on the slicer. Click on Options. Click on Report Connections. Here we see all our pivot tables and pivot chart names. Select all and press OK. Let's repeat these steps for all the slicers.
Next, let's lock all the slicers in place to avoid unnecessary resize and movements. Now, let's check if our dashboard is working. Click on the slicers. Let's select ERS 2016. Now, our dashboard display data pertaining to 2016. If we select ERS 2017, data pertaining to 2017 will reflect in our dashboard. Based on our selection, the entire dashboard gets updated. It's that powerful. To unfilter the selection, click on Clear Filter option on top of your dashboard. Wow! Our dashboard is complete and it's alive. Simple, isn't it? Hey, congrats! You have mastered a new skill today. I believe I was able to help you learn an essential skill in a simple way. Now, you need to think how you can utilize what you have learned and apply the idea in your workplace. Any doubts, any queries, feel free to ask. We are here to help you. Hope you enjoyed this class. See you again in the next tutorial.